Good afternoon. I am not Gareth Smart. I'm Jessica, but this is the Ash Creek News for Friday, July 17th on the Hub Online Network. So let's start the show. I'm here with Vivian McLean, who is the new Hub Summer Program Coordinator. Welcome back to the Hub team, Vivian. Thank you. Are you excited to be back for a second summer? Yep. Are you excited about the new position that you're in? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about um, what, what your job is. What, what is the Program Coordinator? What are you doing all summer? Um, so I plan events for people of all different ages and different groups and whatnot, so we can um, so we can increase community involvement and just put on events that will be fun for people. Awesome. And you've got a couple of events already started. You've only been here for two weeks and you've already, you just got the ball rolling right away. So tell me about what you've got going for kids. So um, last year we ran a bunch of kid camps. Mm -hmm. um, due to COVID-19, of course, this year we will not be able to run camps um, at the same extent that we did last year. But once a week on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m., we will be running kids' camps. Um, and we did a poll on Facebook to see what people wanted. So um, they will be um, alternating weeks between um, the activities of crafts, science experiments, and culinary activities. And so we will be doing six all together and two of each type each Thursday um, starting next week. And the first one is free and the following ones are $5. That's awesome. And these are not in person. You're doing no. them virtually. Yes, through Zoom. So um, when people sign up, they pay. And then um, the day before the camps, they will receive an alert email in which they get the Zoom link and the password in case they need it. That's, that's awesome. That's going to be fine. So what's, what's the planned activity for next week's Crafts. crafts, especially um, paper craft. Paper crafts, and you're a pretty good paper crafter, aren't you? Are you? I suppose it depends on on your okay. opinion. Or is that your sister? I like it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. I like. I especially like origami. Yes. Yeah. That's a paper craft. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. So that's great for kids, and then you've also got an event coming up for pretty much the whole community. So what? What's that one? Um, on July 24th, the next Friday, um, we will be running a drive-in movie um, up at the Ashcroft Indian Band. Um, it's in the parking lot beside the Tim Hortons drive through and we will be screening Smoke Signals. Smoke Signals? I haven't heard that one. Is it an older one? Yes, I believe it was, um, I believe it came out in 1998. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's a classic. It's okay. really, really All right. good. Well, I'm looking forward to that. So how, how can people register for that? Because obviously with COVID, there are restrictions for the number of cars allowed. Mm -hmm. So where, where can they go to get their spot? So they can either come into the Ashcroft Hub office and um, register there, or they can register online at ashcrofthub.perfectmind.com. The, there's a the in front of that. Right. Yes, the that's the hard one. They can also go to the, just the Ashcroft Hub website because there will be a link link getting them to, to the other website with Right, so. yeah, and there, there is a limited number of spots mm -hmm. because um, with, with current restrictions, we can only have gatherings of 50 cars. So, yeah, book your spots before they run out. It'll be really fun. Now, one of the fun things about a drive-in movie is the concession. Is there going to be a concession because I need my snacks before I watch my movie? There will be a concession, um, mostly just the regular things we sell um, at the office in the hub, mm -hmm. um, and it will be by cash only. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Vivian. I'm excited to see what you have uh, planned for the rest of the summer, and I'm excited to have you back on the show again when we have more programs and activities happening. Now, okay. one of the other things happening at the hub is a dog obedience workshop. So let's take a look. Have you got a dog that needs some training? Join the Ashcroft Hub and Obedience Unleashed Dog Training Incorporated for a two-hour workshop covering obedience foundations. The workshop is being held at the Hub on Saturday, July 25th from 4 to 6 p.m. It's for beginners or experienced dog owners looking to build a strong relationship with their dog and practice obedience in a group setting. In the session, the following skills and topics will be covered. Recall, come when called, loose leash walking, sit, down, place, working through distractions, how to, meet, how to greet people and dogs, and much more. 
The training method that will be used in this class is called marker training. What is marker or clicker training? In a nutshell, it's an animal training method based on behavioral psychology that relies on marking desirable behavior and rewarding it. This black and white method of communication is based on positive reinforcement and will revolutionize the way that you train your dog. This class will teach you about the power of training your dog with food and will focus on building the dog handler relationship through engagement and motivation. During the class, you will learn the basic concepts of luring, leash pressure, and shaping of behaviors. We will also cover classical conditioning and discuss how to build motivation in your dog through productive play. Marker training can be used to train any behavior, from basic obedience and tricks to behavioral modification. There are no prerequisites for this course. It is recommended that you bring treats, a food pouch, pouch, leash, and a clicker for your dog. It's also recommended to not feed your dog prior to attending as a hungry dog is more willing to engage in training. Bring a folding chair to sit on. A bit about the trainer. Andy is a dog training educator known for his relationship-centered training approach and his personalized teaching style. His background in psychology and public service coupled with years of experience training police, search and rescue and assistant dogs give him an innovative perspective on dog obedience, behavior and motivation in theory and practice. Andy is the founder and CEO of Obedience Unleashed Dog Training Incorporated and Assistance Service Dogs BC Association. He is also a service dog validator for the Justice Institute of British Columbia. It's $100 per pet owner pair or $50 if you'd like to take the workshop without your dog. There are also a few private lesson slots available for $50. Contact the hub at 250-453-9177 for more information or to register. Surprise! I'm not Jessica. I'm Gareth. Um, thank you for joining us again. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for that wonderful dog video. Um, quickly, while I'm thinking about it, we have, we all took a marketing course thanks to Community Futures, and we all got certificates. So thank you, Community Futures, for putting that on. It was a great two-week course. Um, we learned lots. It was lots of fun. So uh, to Elizabeth Ross, you rocked it. Let's do it again sometime. Now, let's get into the news, which uh, from Ashcroft, from the Village of Ashcroft Facebook page. Now, I am loving the fact that both Cash Creek and Ashcroft finally have Facebook pages that we can go to to get local information about what's happening in our villages. And they say, would your local downtown business like to make improvements to its exterior facade? You may be eligible for reimbursement. Learn more about our business facade improvement program. Uh, and this is, of course, on their Facebook page. Now, this is something that, uh, walking around town the other day, it looks like Slim Jim's Diner has possibly taken advantage of this. They have painted the outside of their building to a nice yellow. Um, so if you can find, you can find a link to this opportunity on the Village of Ashcroft's Facebook page. Now, that being said, now, the other things that are on there currently is what I talked about on Tuesday. There's information about uh, wildfire safety. And uh, if you hadn't paid your taxes yet, well, you missed your opportunity. The, the deadline was two days ago. Did you get your taxes paid? I did. I went in first thing uh, on the 15th in the morning, paid them. I did. There was one person ahead of me. Um, so I waited outside and I paid. Done. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so... That being said, in Cache Creek, however, the 2020 property taxes are due by July 31st, so you still have a little bit of time. They say that due to COVID restrictions, they are only allowing one person at a time into the office. So to avoid lines on the last day, please try to get in ahead of time. And remember that if you pay through your mortgage or prepayment plan, you still have to bring in uh, your mail, your, bring in your mail, sorry, Bring in or mail us your signed homeowner's grant. Now, uh, that being said, based off of every interview that I've done, it looks like Cash Creek has not been receiving the proper amount of property tax over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. Um, the last number that they were talking about is they were just shy of $50,000 worth of property taxes that weren't collected in just 2019. So I'm not sure how far back that goes. So if you haven't paid your property tax, 
get out there and do that. Let's help Cache Creek out. We have lots of uh, different subsidiaries and things we got to pay for. So let's make sure that we keep our taxes up to date. Now, let's talk about flooding. There was an evacuation alert that has been rescinded. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. So please be advised that all evacuation alerts for all properties within the boundaries of Cache Creek are rescinded as of 1300 hours on July 17, 2020. The village of Cache Creek staff will continue to monitor river levels to ensure the safety of all residents. Banks continue to be highly saturated and unstable, so stay well back and keep pets and children at least 10 feet away from the banks. Now, personally, driving around town and taking a look at that erosion, there is quite a bit going on, and it is kind of dicey watching people get close enough to the river. Um, so please stay away from the riverbanks, at least for another few weeks, and let that safety issue sort of let itself die out. Also, we have an update about the flooding from yesterday. And so they are saying in Cache Creek, no, no too much. Sorry, one sec here. Uh, so they say, would, who would blame us if we crossed our fingers and quietly whispered, summer is finally here. Yesterday, the village lifted the remaining evacuation order. No one in Cache Creek is under an order to evacuate. However, everyone, however, everyone along the river is still on evacuation alert. Our state of local emergency was also lifted today. Uh, there is rain in the forecast for Thursday and possibly Friday, which didn't really happen yesterday, but uh, we'll see what happens tonight. And the stage four water restrictions remain in place for the entire town until further notice. Residents are asked to limit their water usage to drinking, food preparation, and personal hygiene. Do not water your lawns or wash your vehicles. The community park is still closed until further notice because of high ground water. Uh, walking, driving, or doing anything else in the water damages the ground and the irrigation system, which taxpayers will eventually have to repair. Do not enter the park while there is still standing water in it. Please stay at least 10 feet away from the riverbanks. Keep children and pets away from the riverbanks. The river levels continue to drop slowly, but bank erosion is still a major hazard. Remember to maintain COVID-19 physical distancing protocols. So that is awesome news for Cache Creek. Uh, we were on under evacuation alert, so... Uh, thank you for the speedy uh, resolving of this uh, from the Cache Creek Village and the EOC and the ESS uh, people respectively. And you can listen to a little bit more of as to what actually has been going on in those emergency services um, with an interview that we did with Sue Peters. We're going to be putting that interview up on Monday. She has lots of really good information, so stay tuned to that. Also, we're giving a 15-minute uh, preview of that interview to the uh, local radio station. So if you are a radio buff in Ashcroft and Cache Creek, you can listen to 15 minutes of that interview uh, on uh, the radio waves. I'm not sure when they're gonna put that up. Do we know? We don't have a specific time, no. Um, so if, if we know in advance, we'll let you know, but until that time, just keep your ears tuned. <laughs> now you had something you wanted to talk about. Jessica, what is going on with you? Uh, not, not much going on with me, but I just wanted to remind people about a few events happening in and around town. Uh, Unity Cafe and Lounge is, are back open. She's back open and she's presenting live music again. Um, she set up a whole new patio outside so that she could actually have live music outside because she's got a 12-person capacity inside, I think. So having live music with, with that many people wasn't, wasn't really an option. Um, so uh, the Tenor Dawson Band, who's been here before, and apparently everybody really enjoyed them, is coming back on July 31st, and uh, that's at 7.30. And she's got a brand new online ordering system, which is unitycafetakeout.com. So you can order your tickets there. You can also order your lunch and just go pick it up. Um, and again, the, hum the hub fundraiser for July is Sipology by Steeped Tea. Have you placed your tea order yet? I haven't, but I think I, I've been looking at the uh, brochure for it. Mm -hmm. so. I need to do mine too. But we've got seven teas, hot chocolate, and some teaware. Each of the items is $12, and a portion of that goes directly to the hub for all their fundraising goal, um, which goes to support programs and services here at the hub. And you can find that those products at the ashcrafthub.perfectmind.com. And that's all I have right now. So the perfect mind, what, what is, how does that website, why, why did the hub ever choose that particular website? It sounds like a very complicated name. So it's, it's not. So the perfect, perfect mind is, is a, um, 
program that allows us to have oh. online services okay. um, and online an online store basically. So that's that's why it's there. But you can always just go to the hub on, or hub the Ashcroft Hub .com or .ca and there is a link to it. You don't have to remember. It's on gotcha. the Hub's website too. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Remember to get your tea. And does Nadine have a driver for deliveries, or I don't does know. she just? I'm Shut not down sure, but apparently she does do takeout occasionally. Awesome. And good, deliveries, good for you, so. Nadine. If you're watching, yeah. congratulations on moving up and uh, having deliveries available. Yeah. So from Brad Viss, he tweets that the Canadian-U.S. border is to remain closed to non-essential travel until at least August 21st. Um, now, everything that I've read, a bunch of epidemiologists and pathologists are thinking that the uh, U.S.-Canada border is going to remain closed until a vaccine is made, uh, but they just keep extending it by month by month, just like the state of emergency that British Columbia is mm -hmm. specifically on. And they've choose, chosen August, like the 21st of every month as sort of that arbitrary timeline, um, but we'll see what happens in August and see if they expand it again. If you look at a map and how the coronavirus is spreading, the U.S. is pretty covered Whereas Canada just has a little pocket, so mm -hmm. it'd be. In, I can't see them actually opening up the border and having everybody just coming into Canada. But stranger things have happened. Uh, Jackie Taggart tweets BC Liberal Steelhead Caucus commends federal conservative funding and calls out NDP in action. This tweet is followed by a story that says that the BC Liberal Steelhead Caucus is pleased to see the federal government taking action to support wild steelhead population, but continues to call on the province to take further steps to protect the endangered species. The BC Liberal Steelhead Caucus has been working to bring awareness to the need for more uh, conservation, including a tour last fall where they traveled southwestern BC, visiting hatcheries and fisheries, restoration projects, and meeting with experts and First Nations about serious conservation concerns. So that's awesome. Um, I know that with Brad Viss and Jackie Taggart, Steelhead has been a, a major issue that they both ran on uh, in their platforms. So it's awesome to see uh, Jackie tweeting about information about that. Is someone messing with these lights? Are they, are they changing no. color? It feels like they're going... They're probably not the same brightness, and so Maybe. when you move from one to the other, it's different. Um, in the a new tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> in the interior... Oh, Matthias is going to take a look at it. They're, they're good? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it, two. It, it, at, when, I, when we started this show, it looked like it, they were kind of redder, but now they feel like they're white. I don't know. I'm sorry. Your eyes have adapted. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so from CFJC, on Thursday, July 16th, the BC Coroner Service released the most recent numbers on illicit drug toxicity deaths in the province. Uh, the news was not good. Throughout BC, 175 people have died from illicit drug use during uh, June including three deaths in Kamloops. Dr. Carol Fenton, medical, office, uh, medical health officer with Interior Health, says that there are several reasons which could be related to COVID-19 that have changed how and why people are using drugs. That includes the closure of the border between Canada and the U.S., which could affect supply, among various other reasons. The coronavirus pandemic has dominated the news cycle for much of the past four months. However, Dr. Fenton says Interior Health has continued to put in work on the op opioid crisis. While deaths related to substance uh, have risen, Interior Health plans to continue to provide services for people struggling uh, with drug uses uh, and issues. Has Which it, Has it really only been four months of COVID? I feel like March, we've been doing it April, forever. May, oh, I June, think we just adapt so, so easily to, yesterday, today. Today, it would be from March to now, yep. is how many? April, May, June, July. Yeah, four months, exactly. The 17th of March was my last day at work. Although, although, it has been going on in the world yeah. since January. Yeah. That's, so maybe that's why it feels like it's a little bit longer. I feel like I just, we've adapted. So we just adapt and we just carry on and it just becomes life. Right. If you have any interesting COVID stories, we would love to hear them. Please email us at hon at ashcrofthub.com or comment on this video. Uh, and tell us 
what your COVID story is. You guys have pretty much been watching us and seeing how we've been dealing with COVID, but we would love to hear how you guys have been doing. So also, we made the move back to Facebook. Did we you, did. Did you mention that? I didn't. Okay. Welcome, so Facebookers. We, as much as we love YouTube, there's something very gratifying about seeing the amount of views that we get on Facebook versus the amount of <laughs> views that we've been getting on YouTube, which has been uh, very small in comparison. So uh, we decided to that we have a larger audience on Facebook, so we're, we're back. If you're watching us on Facebook, thank you for watching. Do we have, we probably have no comments. Uh, Nancy Duchesne said congratulations earlier. Oh, congratulations well, <laughs> thank you, Nancy. <laughs> and, th and I believe Vicky Trill was watching too, so thank you, Vicky. Um, anyway, yes, so we're back on Facebook. But we're going to put all of our other content still on YouTube, so watch out for that stuff. We have a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. Troy and Matthias and Cedar have been working tireless, tirelessly on uh, all sorts of other material that hopefully you guys will enjoy. Now, in the interior still, testing for COVID-19 is available to all those who need it, but we are reminding everyone that testing is not required for those who do not have symptoms. Testing is by appointment only. Call your primary care provider, health uh, family, physician, or nurse practitioner, or the closest interior health community testing and assessment center. Find out more info on the Interior Health Facebook page. In the province, so now let's expand our bubble here a little bit. In the province, uh, since we're talking about COVID, on July 16th, we had 21 new cases, and on the 15th, we had 13 new cases, giving us 36 new cases in the last two days. The provincial government would like to remind us that no one uh, should have to experience a racist or hate incident. If you see one happening, here's what you can do. Above all else, ensure your safety. It's key to being a good witness. If it's safe, Ask the victim if they are okay or if they want help. Talk to others in the space or gather support for the victim. Take a photo, record a video, or make notes. Always ask the victim what they want to do with the photo or video and don't post it online without their permission. Ask the victims if they want to uh, help to report the incident to police or to connect them to the victim's link, uh, which you can find on the Government of BC's Facebook page. Vicky Trill says, here I am. Alpha and Joanne are listening too. Yeah. Smiley, face emoji, smiley face emoji. Joan. Smiley face emoji. Smiley face emoji. Hello, Joan. Hello, Alf. Hello, Vicky. Thank you all for watching. You should all be watching separately so we get more views. <laughs> Use all of your computers. <laughs> There's eight people watching Whoa. right now. If you are one of the people watching and you're not Vicky Trill, tell us that you're watching. And thank you. Uh, John Horgan had a controversial point of view. We're going to talk about, we're going to go back to the opi opioid crisis. John Horgan had a controversial point of view during a press conference the other day stating, and this is now in quotes, we have an opioid crisis that involves people using drugs. These are choices initially. Now, the reason that this is controversial, and I've been hearing that I used to, to live down at the coast, and many people would say that uh, people that are addicted to drugs living down on the uh, downtown east side, um, it's not a choice. It's uh, using drugs as a mental illness, um, and they're not there by choice. They're there because of the mental illness that they have that happens to be part of the drugs. Uh, so he has come under fire, John Horgan has come under fire because of that. So the uh, BC Liberal Party is going after him pretty hard. Uh, they've made a bunch of uh, Twitter. Now, Facebook doesn't let you post things about politics, <laughs> like boost things. So like if we have an interview with Brad Viss, we wouldn't be allowed to boost that post. Uh, but on Twitter, they're, they're blasting him pretty hard with a bunch of different ads and stuff. So it's pretty interesting. And I'm surprised that the NDP leader is saying that because the NDP, and I think, would, all, would be the party that more helps the people in the op opioid crisis. Or am I understanding politics wrong? I, I don't know what, I think everybody wants to help. Oh, totally. And, and it's a very noble thing to want. I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I'm surprised that he said that. I, it might have been a slip of a, the tongue type thing. But let us know what you think about John Horgan's uh, 
slip of the tongue. Yes, Matthias. Nancy Duchesne says, I am watching. Hi, Nancy. And Jim says that there are three of us here. Jim McLean. Jim McLean. Oh, Jim's, Jim McLean is watching. Oh, I guess Vivian was on earlier. But hi, Jim, and hi, the two other people that are watching. I'm, I'm assuming that it's probably Susan, Susan and, and... Or it could be Cece and Could Rob. be Cece. Anyway, hello, McLeans. Uh, so, for the country, everyone in the cabinet... Bear, so, this is from the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, so, of course, we've been following the story about the We Charity scandal that's been going on with Prime Minister Trudeau. Um, because there is a slight link to the hub, although we're not, like, I'm, I'm, tr I'm tens gently trying to, to make it relevant to us here. But the assistant prime minister of the country says, everyone in the cabinet bears responsibility for this situation, and I would like to say to Canadians, I'm really sorry uh, about the We Charity controversy. The prime minister has my complete confidence. It is a privilege for me to serve in his cabinet. Now, for those of you that may not know the facts, there was a pot of money, $900 million, closer to a billion dollars, really, after you take in all the fees and stuff, that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau had to create a bunch of summer jobs, uh, sort of volunteer positions for students to be able to make a little bit of money for jobs that they may not have gotten due to COVID. Um, he gave that contract, instead of giving it to the, the, like the federal group, because there is a federal group that does deal with this, uh, he gave it to this charity called We Charity and said, here's the contract. Then it came out that We Charity paid Trudeau's family to be speakers at events of theirs. Um, so his mom had gotten over $200,000 and his brother-in-law got $32,000. He spoke at a bunch of events, et cetera, et cetera. His wife does a podcast for them, um, and he arbitrarily, it didn't go through a lot of different places. He just kind of said, hey, we charity, here's the contract, $900 million. The conservatives found out, the NDP found out, and surprisingly, this is this has united the conservatives and the NDP against the liberals. They are both saying that this is wrong. Um, so now here we are. The we charity has dropped the contract. They've now given it back to the government. And Justin Trudeau is now apologizing profusely and he's going to be put again in front of an ethics committee. Uh, and they're talking about subpoenaing him to uh, make sure that he does it this time. Because there has been times in the past where he sort of was supposed to talk to the ethics committee and then he kind of slid through and he didn't actually have to participate. So um, it's interesting that it's now gotten to the point where the deputy prime minister is saying that they're all involved I'm surprised that they've said that as well. Uh, but let us know what you think. Uh, sh what, what do you think should be the outcome of this? Now, this is the third time that uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been uh, through this kind of ethics uh, violation. Um, so is this now the straw that broke the camel's back, in your opinion? Please let us know at hon at ashcrofthub.com. That is pretty much the show that we have for you guys today. Jessica, oh, we have something else from Jessica. I do. I had to change my costume. So the Hob Online Network is starting a new segment for our Friday show. And this week we are looking for your, uh, I wrote this and now I can't read my own writing. This week we are looking for all you green thumbs out there. We want to know what you got growing on. So maybe you have a vibrant flower garden, maybe you have an amazing array of vegetables. These were locally grown zucchini, they're humongous. Um, or maybe you have a single beautiful little house plant that brings you joy every day. But we want to see all of it and we want to share it with our viewers. So send us a photo or a short video, less than a minute, showcasing what you've got growing on and you could be featured on an upcoming episode of the Ash Creek News. Send your submissions to Han at ashcrofthub.com with the subject line, what I got growing on, and be sure to include your name and which community you're from. And we might showcase your garden or vegetable or flowers in another show. Awesome, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, and so lastly, but not leastly, uh, let's say Martina Duncan, if you're watching, we hope you're doing well. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you Tuesday.